it's just not a good feeling. And I think there's really no way around it being just a very uncomfortable, painful situation. Hey guys, it is a Sunday morning. Yesterday I was feeling so gross, so tired, nauseous, all that stuff. I feel like I'm doing a little bit better today. I'm hoping to do a little bit better today. I'm about to jump on a call with Georgetta. This is something we've been planning literally since the day I told her I was pregnant. Actually, the day after I found out I was pregnant, she had a baby about a year ago or a little over a year ago. So she's just out of the thick of it or she's in a different thick of it now, but she has all of those baby products, baby needs, pregnancy needs, all that stuff very fresh in her mind. And she wants to share all of her knowledge with me and I feel so lucky that she's taking the time to do this so we're gonna have a big talk we've had this scheduled for a little while and hopefully I'm gonna be learning a lot because Grant and I have been doing so much research and really digging in and trying to understand all the needs stuff about car seats a lot about car seats and I just feel like this is gonna help me so much I'm just about to call her I'm also just about to have one of these the preggy pops. I don't know if you guys have ever tried these if you had nausea during pregnancy. I'm not sure if they're just for pregnancy or if they generally help with nausea. We actually got these from some friends. They gathered together a couple of pregnancy products because they're actually going through it too. And they have been so helpful. I cannot open this with one hand. And my nausea hasn't been off the charts. I don't think it has been nearly as severe as a lot of people like I'm not throwing up it's not 24 7 but it is bothersome and I do feel like these actually help which is really cool I don't know what it is that helps necessarily but I'm down for it and they taste really good so obviously that's nice also okay I need to get on this call <laughs> somehow I'm already sweating I need to turn on the fan <laughs> before I do this say hi to the people <laughs> <laughs> that's the most we can get <laughs> all right i'm off the call with georgetta we talked for almost two hours i got so much amazing advice she told me all of the stories about all the like big hitter items like the car seat the stroller the crib we talked about a ton of stuff and there's still a ton more stuff to talk about i appreciate having her advice so much like i've watched so many videos we're reading a book that's very specific about baby products and like basically like the consumer report of baby products but i just feel like having those personal stories from a friend it's just kind of irreplaceable you know so i appreciate it so much i was so happy to like take notes during that call <laughs> haven't taken notes during a call with a friend maybe ever <laughs> but i definitely took notes and we are so excited to like narrow down our list and work on this i definitely feel like when grant and i have like a mutual mission like a quest to, to go on we like kind of bond through that it might not always go 100 percent smoothly but i think we are both motivated by those kind of things <laughs> Hello? Anyway, after the call, we talked a lot, we had lunch, and I also got changed. I put on this little set that I got specifically to do a pregnancy transformation video. I've seen a bunch of people do videos like this. It's basically where you capture a little video and photos twice a month, three times a month during your pregnancy, and you show the progression of your bump as you go along in pregnancy. It's kind of like, you know, when people upload those videos of like, oh, I took a selfie every single day for three years. And it's like not too much really changes. But for this kind of video, you actually see very significant changes. And I wanted to start early. I'm about seven weeks and four days to like sort of have like a baseline kind of. I mean, I don't really know when you're supposed to start. I've seen ones that start at like 12, 13 weeks, 16 weeks, also like nine weeks. Um, I don't know if I've seen one that actually starts at seven weeks, but I'm excited. I'm getting started right now. I definitely don't have like a baby bump to document at all. I more so have like a food baby to document because we just had lunch and I'm definitely a lot more bloated in the past few weeks. I've been having all kinds of stomach trouble, probably mostly due to the progesterone and estrogen that I'm still taking. I know that can cause you all kinds of stomach issues and I'm definitely a lot more bloated. I definitely don't have a baby butt. My baby is like 
I don't know, like half an inch right now. So this is not baby, this is, you know, chicken fingers. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna work on right now. It's not gonna take me very long at all because they're just really, really quick clips. And I'm gonna try to stick with it and do it probably every other week, maybe every three weeks, just kind of depending on if I'm noticing changes. And hopefully I actually remember to stick with it. And then obviously once I'm done being pregnant, once I give birth, I will put all the clips together and have a really cool memory from my pregnancy. All right, I need to just go ahead and get started because we've got other stuff that we wanna do. And this really won't take very long. It's just like a quick clip to get it all started. All right, we're on the road. I'm here with Grant and we are at the baby store. Yes, we are on a roll right now. Yet again, we are not planning on buying anything right now. We are really just trying to compile a list and get focused on the stuff that we do want to do more research on or maybe we're settled on. And mainly it's going to be strollers and car seats. We've done a ton of car seat research this morning we were literally watching crash test footage with car seats and so we've learned a lot we definitely want everything we use to be absolutely as safe as possible of course uh, but also the other factor that i actually hadn't considered as far as strollers is being tall and needing a good length of stride like if there is a big basket underneath the stroller that could get in the way um, that's something that georgetta brought up i had thought about handle height and maybe that's a question i can ask you guys too if you're a tall person and you've used a stroller either like a nanny or you are a mom is there like a really great tall person stroller i should google that specifically somehow i haven't googled that yet but it's just something that i feel like you can only look at online and look at reviews for so long before you like have to go to a store and see the actual products so back at the baby store not planning to buy right now but we're just excited to get this list ironed out as much as we can i'm sure we're going to be adding stuff to our list of things we want and things that we need until the baby is born and of course for the rest of the baby's life but it's just exciting and i'm so happy that grant is into this process helping me research everything along the way he's literally looking at cribs on his phone right now all right let's go ahead and go in this is georgetta's main stroller so we heard a lot about this one today and i'm definitely interested <laughs> the salesperson told us this was his favorite and it really does a lot it moves really easy we've got the infant car seat apparently it can work up to 50 pounds which all i want in this world is to not have to buy like 80 strollers <laughs> We were just in the stroller and car seat section for hours. It wasn't hours, it felt like hours, but for a very long time, we talked to a salesperson for a long time that was super, super helpful. Honestly, we added one to the list. We didn't take any off the list yet. We added two, I think. We added two to the list. The so it's just gotten a little bit more complicated rather than less, but I feel like we're getting a better feel for what we're looking for. He's got his book over there. He brought the baby bargains book in. <laughs> Honestly, my legs hurt right now and I was really ready to test out a glider too. All right, after a few hours at the baby store, we had to stop and get some Lupe tortilla. I love Lupe tortilla so much. The beef fajitas are so good. And there was one right by the baby store. So we had to make it happen. I am starving. I know you're not supposed to be like eating for two and obviously I'm not eating for two, but I am so hungry. You wanna be in this? <laughs> Grant wants to be in this. Okay, so we just had dinner. I feel like I'm fading fast already. It's like 
8, 8.15, still have to do my progesterone shot at nine o'clock. So I have to stay up for that, but I could definitely just go to sleep and be out right now. But before any of that happens, I wanted to give you guys like a little mini week seven update because as you know, last week I had a lot of updates with stuff that had happened like spotting and we had to go in for an ultrasound to check everything out because of the bleeding. Um, and everything came back pretty good at that ultrasound, but I had another ultrasound to go to this past Thursday. And again, everything looks good. The baby is growing normally. It uh, was measuring, I think, seven weeks, and it was seven weeks in one day. She said not to worry if it's like one day off. Like, of course, my brain's like, where is that one day? What's going on? But apparently, it's not something that you have to worry about, so I'm not worrying about it. <laughs> More than anything at this point, she said that you want to look for a healthy heartbeat. You want to see that progress, and it definitely did. The heart rate looked good, and I have new pictures of the baby this one shows the heartbeat you can't see the baby very well in this one but you can see a nice strong heartbeat and i told a little bit of this on my story right after the ultrasound actually i want to show you this one too because the baby is actually getting a little shape still still doesn't look like a baby we're still waiting on that but it's getting there. It's at least looking like something. It's not just like one white speck in a whole big picture of like space goo. So all of those things are good. I feel like we're moving in the right direction, but she did notice that that one little spot that they saw on the ultrasound last Saturday that she said, oh, that could be the subchorionic hematoma. The sonographer at this latest ultrasound said that that spot is growing. So then my doctor said, this could result in more bleeding, continued bleeding, and possibly passing a clot. Um, I've heard that it could be a painful thing. It might be something that's just absorbed by the body. Um, I haven't noticed increased bleeding. I don't know if it's something that you just kind of have to wait on or whatever, but that's what's going on with me. It's not the best to see that spot growing, but obviously there could be much, much worse things going on. And I am just so happy to see that the baby is progressing well and the heartbeat is good. And I don't have another ultrasound until the 25th or the 26th. I have like several OB appointments scheduled. And then I also have, I think what is gonna be my last appointment with a fertility clinic scheduled. So I have all of those dates in my head right now. I'm gonna be like graduating from my fertility doctor. That's an interesting moment not everybody gets um, but it'll be a big moment because it will also kind of go along with getting to stop the progesterone shots which will be amazing i am really looking forward to that i think by tuesday this week we'll only have i think two more weeks of the progesterone shots i feel like we've been doing them forever my hips and the lumps that i've told you guys about they're just like numb painful bruised it's just not a good feeling. And I think there's really no way around it being just a very uncomfortable, painful situation. I do think that all of the tips that I've shared help a lot. It could definitely be worse, but no matter how you do it, it's just not a fun thing to have to do. So that's where I'm at for week seven. By the time you see this, I'll almost be week eight exciting. So excited to be counting down these weeks. I just, I'm just waiting for that week 12. I know nothing super magical happens by week 12, but I don't know that that is my number. It's just like, I will feel like I will be able to breathe a whole new like sigh of relief and feel more secure. And I know it's nothing is promised, but it's just for me, that's what I am working towards. You know what I mean? If I could be working towards anything, I'm mostly like sleeping and feeling kind of queasy. It's a hard job. Okay, and now something completely unrelated, but it's something that I talked about on my story, sort of. I just kind of mentioned it, and it involves Grant. And I got a bunch of questions on Instagram about it, but I didn't really go into more detail with it. And I feel like you guys might 
appreciate hearing about it. Actually, let me go on the other side of you. So what I mentioned on Instagram is that Grant got his second dose of the COVID vaccine. And I got a ton of questions about that and I thought it might be helpful for him to share his experience in case it's just something you're wondering about, in case you don't know anybody that's gotten the vaccine yet. I haven't gotten it. Um, I don't think you, know, you can get a vaccine in your first trimester. I think that the opportunity comes up in your second trimester or third. I'm not a doctor, don't quote me on these things, but it is something that we've been looking into for me. And obviously Grant hopped on the chance the first time he could to go ahead and get started with the vaccine. So he had his first one in December, right? Uh -huh. It was December, it was early December. Mm -hmm. And then I got the second dose on the 8th of January. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the Pfizer variant or brand or whatever, and it went really well. Uh, after the first dose, um, I felt a little tired that night, but I don't know, that may have just been being tired from work. And then the next day, the next couple of days, my arm was definitely pretty, was sore but like only if you touched it like if it i wasn't hadn't just like yeah if i had left it alone it would yeah. have been fine and i think i even worked out the day after like when I was using yeah. my arms and didn't have any issues and then well i i want to <laughs> add you know he said he had like a little bit of tiredness and stuff same day and on that day you know we were kind of on high alert like oh okay how's it going what's yeah. up like how's this gonna go and he was like, I feel kind of off, like a little bit tired, a little bit eh, but I'm not even sure if like that's in my head or if it's just like I woke up really early for work, you know? So it was like almost undetectable. So yeah. I just want to make sure you guys know, like it really was not a super serious reaction. Um, second dose went fine. My arm was actually less sore. Uh, but the next day, so I got it in the afternoon on a Thursday and then Friday, I started to just kind of feel kind of tired and, um, kind of like when you have a cold, you just feel kind of run down and, and not feeling great. Um, so I came home to rest. I took a Tylenol and that really basically kind of made it a lot, made me feel a lot better. Uh, I was still pretty tired. So I just kind of hung out on the couch that afternoon. Uh, I did get up and like move some Christmas decorations around and oh, that yeah. kind of like, it was later in the evening. yeah, that kind of made me feel a lot more tired. Yeah. But, um, I think by the time I went to bed, I took another Tylenol before I went to sleep. But by the time I went to bed, I was like, I was sleepy and I wanted to go to sleep, but I was, I, I was already feeling better. And just um, the Tylenol was enough to manage yeah, those big, little yeah. side effects that popped up. Tylenol, I think I had like, you know, I think some of it I was just kind of maybe just hungry too. I, <laughs> so I ate and I had the Tylenol and I felt a lot better. I have talked to a couple people that, that after the second dose, um, they had about 12 to 24 hours of some um, like fevers and chills and, and feeling kind of crummy. Hmm. But uh, it went and away. And even taking Tylenol didn't really help them, or it was just. No, I didn't ask them if they took anything okay. for it. Um, but then by the second day, when I woke up, I felt fine and didn't have any. I, I didn't. I actually kind of forgot about it. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's really good news. It's definitely yeah. encouraging to me. It's a safe thing. There's not going to be some weird, you know, long-term effect from it. It's just not. That's not what's going to happen. It's just sort of a weird situation, and I get why people are kind of hesitant because there's people in healthcare, you know, doctors and nurses and everybody, um, who are hesitant. And I think there's a lot of skepticism. You know, skepticism and sort of a paranoia. Just because it was done so quickly. Yeah, and I think that there's, they feel like, oh, is there, does it do actually do anything? Is it safe? At the end of the day, there's not a reason not to take it because I don't really know when people are saying, we don't know what the long-term effects of it would be. I don't know what sort of long-term effects they're worried about. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not, it's not going to alter your DNA or we're very good at making vaccines and that's something that medicine is actually very good at. So, um, and this is something that they've been wanting to try to get one of these type of vaccines out for several years now. And the testing was just going to be too expensive. And, you know, lo and behold, now all this you know, happens and they get it funded and they prove it's safe. And 
this will probably be the type of vaccine going forward. Um, they've already announced that there's promising data for actually a vaccine for multiple sclerosis using the same technology. Wow. So yeah, and this is going to be. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So this is, you know, it's a new thing, but this is the next great step in medicine. Mm -hmm. So. All right, you heard it here first. If you trust Grant at all on anything other than, I don't know, taste tests yeah. and boots. It's just one experience, you know, in case you don't know anybody that's had the vaccine. I don't know anybody except for Grant that's had it. So I was very, very interested to see how it would all play out because, you know, we have heard about some people having, um, you know, more severe reactions, especially to that second dose. And I was just really hoping that, you know, Grant wouldn't feel horrible for a whole weekend. I mean, we were vlogging that weekend after he got it. Um, yeah. and I was like, Oh wow, is he going to be like sick all weekend? That'll be terrible. Um, but that totally didn't happen. So I just wanted to put that out there because I did get tons of questions about it when I mentioned it on Instagram, but I don't know. I just didn't think to actually go into detail with it on Instagram. So I thought I'd do that here. Hopefully it's helpful. If you don't care, that's fine too. All right. Well, honestly, we're both super super tired grant as we've been sitting here watching Shit's creek after we ate dinner he's been looking at more baby stuff he's on a roll i really feel so grateful that you are such a good researcher and you are so in it with me on this because it's overwhelming there is just well, so much stuff and there's yeah. so much safety stuff to be aware of and i could see how things could fall through the cracks you know yeah it's it's like a very complex knot we're trying to unravel yeah but i'm confident that we're gonna crack this case yeah <laughs> and we're gonna have a cool functional thing that you're gonna like and it's gonna be good yeah yeah i'm excited yeah. All right, well, I think that's it for me. I'm sorry, this is just a one day vlog, but I was just feeling like crap yesterday. And so it had to be what it had to be. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Thanks, I love you, bye.